Hey guys, Serial Simmer here. Today I am going to be working on a craftsman style build for my personal career legacy challenge. I haven't actually posted any videos on that, but it's one that I like to play through kind of in my own time and I got really inspired by um, growing together and all of the new assets that came with that pack, all of the craftsman style things to build a craftsman style house. Um, and I am just starting that career legacy challenge. So my first sim is in the acting career. And so Del Sol Valley is the perfect place to be for them, of course. And if you kind of look around in the world, there are a lot of craftsman style builds adjacent to this lot. This is Upland Place. It's a 30 by 20 lot. And then it has kind of this interesting driveway style path style thing next to the park there on the left hand, left hand side of the screen. I think you can kind of see where it like makes the lot a bit smaller. And I did initially try to keep that and then ended up wanting more bedrooms, wanting more space for my house, wanting to use the rest of the, the area of the lot. So that does end up going away in the very end of the video. Um, here we're just kind of getting the shape and you'll see I'm bouncing back and forth looking at the building next door to us to try to get some inspiration for how I want this house to look because I really want this house to fit into the neighborhood. I know it's going to look a bit nicer, maybe a bit more expensive than the neighboring houses, but I wanted it to kind of to fit in a little bit. The other thing that I should mention um, while we're getting into this build is that I didn't end up furnishing this build. And the reason is because my Sims don't have just gobs and gobs of money. Um, the ones that I'm playing with for the career legacy challenge. And I needed to make this house somewhat affordable for them. It does end up being a two story house with four bedrooms and I believe four bathrooms. I'll double check at the end for that. Um, but yeah, we have two upstairs. So two kids bedrooms upstairs a shared bathroom, like a Jack and Jill bathroom situation for the kids. And then there's the guest room up there with its own bathroom that sort of goes and services the whole upstairs as well. Like if you were hanging out in the loft area, you would use that bathroom as well. Um, and then there is a sort of main floor bath and a master suite bath or a primary suite bath, excuse me. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty good layout, pretty good build. I definitely find that ever since Growing Together came out and now we have infants and stuff, my builds have become significantly bigger. This family is only going to have two kids in it. At the beginning of the challenge, what you do is you, you know, pick a number between one and six and whatever number you get is the number of kids that you're going to have in that legacy challenge. And so luckily I only got two for my first one, but that does mean according to the rules, um, which I will link in the description below. And if I can, I'll add a card as well. But um, that does mean that on my next generation, I won't be able to have only two kids. That will be a number that if I roll between one and six and I get two, I'll have to re-roll. So it'll be a number between one and six, but not two, if that makes sense. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of how big of a family we end up having in future generations um, and how we are able to afford that, et cetera, et cetera. But um, getting back to the build here, we are just going to go through some doors to try to figure out how we want to access this back patio area. And these Eagle Lifestyle doors look so beautiful with all of the other white trim and everything going back here. But I just thought they were a little bit too modern for this, this specific build. So... Um, I think that's going to be inspiration for a future craftsman style build. You guys will have to let me know too, if you guys are doing your own sort of legacy style challenges, if you are doing like a, a rags to legacy, if you're doing a career legacy challenge like I'm doing currently, I would love to know how you guys are playing the game in your personal time as well. It's so fun to hear how different players play this game. Anyways, Getting back to the build here again, we are now adjusting where the garage is going. It was just getting too squishy with the back patio. And if you do look at the neighbor's house, it's really squishy, um, their garages and their back patio. So I just, I didn't like the idea of that for gameplay. So I do end up moving it um, to the other side here, which is like all the way to the back of this alley. Um, and since there's not actually cars in The Sims, I didn't like try too hard to make it super realistic. In fact, the front driveway for the garage, you can't even 
you wouldn't even really be able to access with a car um, because there's a fence in the way. But it's still fun for gameplay. I do end up putting like a basketball um, hoop out there so that the kids can try that. Or if my sim needs to gain um, some fitness skill for the acting career, she'll be able to do that pretty easily. Here we are. We're just going to go ahead and make the house a little bit wider. And I actually do this, gosh, I'm trying to think two or three times. I widen the house in different directions by literally like one tile. <laughs> I'm trying to kind of keep the dimensions and the vibe of the house. But at the same time, I just kept being like, I think I need some more space here. I want some more space. I want a little, just like another row of tiles <laughs> to work with. So yeah, I end up doing that. And now we're going to go in and put in some of these spandrels, these craftsman style spandrels, which I think are so pretty. Um, have you guys been building a lot of craftsman style builds? If you have, I would love to see them. You could post your EA ID. I know I had somebody on my um, other build video comment and say that they had just done a reno of the same build that I posted. And I was like, oh, I really wish like you could post your EA, EA ID so I could see it. Um, it'd be really fun to be able to get, see your guys' stuff and like comment on your builds. And so feel free to like post your EA IDs um, so we can find them. Yeah on the gallery. So yeah, of course we're gonna add the tree house here. That's like a must have now. That thing is so stinking expensive though. Speaking of stinking expensive, on a more personal note, my fridge just broke this last weekend and we had to go all weekend without a refrigerator. We were just using coolers. And then we finally have a technician that came out yesterday morning um, and told us that it's pretty much shot. It's gonna cost more than it's worth to fix it. So we um, had to go out yesterday and quickly buy a new emergency fridge, which I'm so thankful we were able to do. But also, um, we thankfully were able to find a scratch and dent place that sells refrigerators for a lot cheaper than you can get them at like a big box store like Home Depot or Lowe's. So yeah, getting back to the build, we're starting to do some terrain painting here. And then I don't know if you saw, I did add like a bunch of, I want to call them like Arbor Vitae's, but they're not. Those like big tall trees there. And I kind of tried to, to intersperse them between the trees that were on the other side um, on the park lot right there so that we would have basically like a really tall living privacy fence right there. I am excited to live next to a park lot and that's definitely one of the reasons that I picked this specific lot in Del Sol Valley. I really wanted them to have access to a kid's playground without having to own all of the kid's equipment myself. Um, so being literally right next door is one of my favorite gameplay hacks. I don't know if you guys do that as well, or if you know other gameplay hacks to make having kids a little bit easier or making it easier for your Sims kids to make friends, please leave those tips and tricks below. So yeah, we are just picking out some flooring um, for the whole house now. Um, I end up going with kind of this warmer tone, uh, wood kind of dark with a bit of warm in it. And, uh, most craftsman style homes that I've been in typically have like almost like a mahogany looking trim. Usually don't have white. They usually have like darker, warmer colors. Maybe it's just, um, you know, what was in around the time that they were actually built. So most authentic ones I've seen actually do have that like redder, color, but I didn't want to fully go for that. It's not my personal favorite. So I went with something a bit darker with just a warm tone in it. And um, now, yeah, we're just working on the floor plan. Um, and in, as you can see, some of those lights have kind of glitched into the walls. And that's why I use those bigger saucer lights. I don't know if you guys maybe use the smaller ones, but usually when I do that, I end up with like weird lighting glitches when I'm done building my house because I've lost a light somewhere in a wall. Um, so that's why I tend to use those bigger saucer lights while building. And then I go back and I replace them with the smaller ones for actual gameplay. Here we are just making some dormers and trying to figure out exactly how big we want this second story to be when I finally decided we definitely needed that extra space in the second story. Um, and then playing with the roofing as always. I feel like I'm kind of a fiddly roofer. <laughs> which is sort of a funny thing to say, but yeah, I tend to kind of do my new adjustments over the time of my build and slowly but surely get to the end result um, by just making small adjustments all along the way. So back on a more personal note, my new fridge actually just got delivered. So that was exciting. I always get so stressed out when I have to have people, delivery people, or um, somebody come work on my house. 
Um, I don't know. I guess maybe it's just like a social anxiety thing. I never know what to do. I also just feel kind of like useless, which is never like a fun feeling. <laughs> I'd like to like help them, but I have to just sit there and watch because I obviously don't know what I'm doing and or can't lift a ginormous fridge. Um, yeah, so we're going to go back in and add some more of these windows here to the front. I really didn't like the look of the larger ones. They just kept looking like eyes to me, and I just really don't like the look of one kind of large window on either side of the front of a house. I just, it just looks like eyeballs to me and I just can't see anything else. I don't know. So I think that when I actually move my career legacy challenge um, household into this lot, I'm going to use that back garage as actually kind of a greenhouse, but it is such a great flex space. I love having actual, um, well, not actual, I guess, pretend garages in, in the Sims as sort of those flex areas where your kids can do um school projects or um, you could have the handiness table and it kind of makes sense to have it there in a garage area or like a shed um, shed area. So yeah, I think I'm going to do part of it in um, greenhouse and then the other part will probably be for like some handiness and stuff. Um, so if earlier in the video you noticed me messing around with some glass roofs, that would be why. Now we're just going and adding a billion of these what are they called? Corbels? <laughs> I don't know. These details, these um, roof line details that are very craftsman style. Um, and then here I realized, oh my gosh, we need another fireplace for sure. So there kind of ends up being like two living rooms in this house. Um, and one of them, I think I'm just going to have be the dining room because like I said, you need so much more space now that we have infants um, just for like routing purposes. Um, so I didn't really want to like squeeze in Although you probably could pretty easily put a second living room back here um, by this fireplace and then a sort of front living room or like a parlor or something fancy um, in that front area where the first fireplace is. And then up here you can finally kind of get a glimpse of the two kids bedrooms, which are exactly the same size, although one definitely has some room on the side to be a bit larger. Um, and then it has a Jack and Jill bathroom, which I just think are the cutest things in the entire world. I would love to have a house that has a Jack and Jill bathroom for the kids. I think that is, yeah, just so stinking sweet. So here we are just kind of playing around with what we want to do with this fireplace and this kind of really long, um, living room area, which is why I have those couches in there. All the furniture in here does end up getting deleted at the end of the video. I think I already mentioned but this house gets uploaded um, without any furniture, unfurnished. I think I leave some kitchen cabinets in it and that's about it. Fireplaces obviously are still there, but pretty much everything else um, gets deleted because this house needs to be inexpensive enough that my career legacy sims can purchase it. And if it was furnished, it would be way out of their reach and I would like them to be able to afford it semi soon as they just had their first baby. So. Yeah, going ahead and kind of working on that Jack and Jill bathroom here. I wanted one Sim to be able to use the toilet or um, the shower while the other one maybe brushed their teeth. So that's why it's split up like that. And then this is the primary bathroom, which isn't actually any bigger, I think, than the Jack and Jill bathroom. I think it's exactly the same size. So it'll have a similar setup. And again, all this furniture, this bathroom furniture doesn't stay. This is just placeholder furniture so that I kind of know what room is supposed to be for what function so that I can put the right flooring and wallpaper in. And also just so that I can kind of have an idea of how I will furnish it once we actually move into the slot. I believe on this side where I just stuck that dresser, I ended up deciding that I was gonna do a more like armoire type situation or like kind of like a built-in shelving for the dresser, make it feel a little bit older. So like cabinet styled things. Um, instead of having just a dresser like that. So yeah, these cabinets, these light brown cabinets with like the, from the parenthood pack, I think it's the pack that they're from, they actually do end up staying. Um, and I was super happy because that sink lined up exactly with the window above it, which I thought was super sweet. This back area of the house I did um, imagine was sort of an extension. So I used different columns on the sides of the fireplace, um, like less expensive ones. And then I did end up using this, um, oh, what do you call it? It's like a wainscoting with like the dark wood on the bottom 
throughout most of the house. As I move in and as my kids get older and I kind of get to learn about their personalities and what they're interested in, I will probably, not probably, certainly, (laughs) I will personalize all the bedrooms. But I also wanted it to be depersonalized enough that when people download it um, from the gallery, you can go ahead and put any kind of personality you want into this house. Um, And maybe you could think of this video as like your Sims are scouting out their house they're using um you know the real estate app and they're watching a video on this house that just came up um on zillow or something (laughs) so yeah going in and just adding some landscaping i did want the landscaping because this is a craftsman styled house and that's a house that would have been built um a while ago i wanted the landscaping to feel mature and like it had been there for a while and then again just adding a little bit of the terrain editing so that um feels a little bit more like organic i guess rather than just the totally flat lot um there's just a tiny bit of that in a few places and it's not like anything major and then yes because this is in del sol valley i did add some like palms and some more like kind of deserty plants as well as landscaping with like a few rocks and things um And then I think a little bit later we go in and we add just a little more terrain, uh, terrain paint to some areas. Yeah, I think this area will be a great area to either do some garden boxes or like I said, if I end up doing the greenhouse um, in the garage, then it'll be a great area for like monkey bars um, or other kids toys right there by the um, basketball hoop. And then I did put a poo bush in the backyard, kind of on the corner there. Um, I thought that would be fun if we end up getting a dog or a cat. They could potentially look for feathers in there. I am also playing on my channel the Friends of the Animal aspiration. I'm trying to complete that aspiration um, in one of my gameplay videos. And I've been like having so much fun with it. So that made me want to include that bush and have um, a pet in this household, which we don't currently have, but hopefully soon we will. And then we are also just going through and deleting these saucer lights and adding some exterior lighting, which is why I have it set to evening right now. Hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. I know it can make it a little bit hard to see when you're watching the video, but it just kind of helps me know how the lighting is working on pathways and such. And my Sims that I am playing with are LGBTQ. So I went ahead and did like a fun rainbow box at the front just because I thought that would be a fun nod to that. And we've got the garbage cans and sort of making the garage feel like a massive afterthought. Maybe they didn't really clean it up before they sold the house. So it'll be a big work in progress um, for whoever buys it for my Sims when they buy it. (laughs) So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into build mode back in the game now and I will show you around and give you a little tour. Okay, so this is our 30 by 20 craftsman styled lot in Del Sol Valley on the Upland Place lot. Um, And the household that I currently have is a ghost. It's not my legacy um, household, but um, just something I grabbed um, out of my game to give you guys this tour really quick. Okay, so through the front door, this is kind of what you see. Um, We've got the stairs leading to the upstairs right there, this nice little drop area or nook that I think I'm gonna add like a hall tree to or maybe a bench with some shoes under it. Um, I did end up leaving, it looks like this one piece of furniture I just thought was so perfect for the house. This is also from Growing Together, so if you have that pack, you will also have this little credenza. And then this is kind of the first living room here to our right um, with the great big fireplace wall um, and it's the long kind of more narrow one. And then we have a powder room right here off the entry. And through here we have, I don't know, it could be either a study or if you're wanting like a small nursery room, but this room actually doesn't have any windows. So that would be something to think about, but I thought it might make like a good study room, a good office. This is the primary room with this beautiful window here and kind of that little nook. Um, I imagine the bed's gonna go here. If you saw the rest of the video, you'll definitely have noticed that I placed that there. And then through this door is the master suite, which I just did um, in black and white. 
also with growing together. And then back out in this hallway, we'll go down this way so that we can get to the sort of second living area, which is ginormous and or this is going to be my um, dining area. I'm going to have a great big table here since my Sims are in the acting career. They like to host a lot. We have this cute red door for the patio. And then through here, we've got a kitchen, kitchen area. I liked having everything a little bit more closed off with these archways. It felt a little bit more realistic to the timeline this house would have been built. And then out back here, we do have our cute little patio, which will look out over the tree house once that's built and our garage over there in the left-hand side. It is nighttime, of course, while I'm trying to show you that. If we go upstairs here, this is sort of the loft space that I think will be a good area for the kids to have toys and things in. Um, this might be a perfect place for that little imagination play tent as my kids turn into toddlers so they can gain that imagination skill. Um, and then this is bedroom number one for the kids. Here we go into the bathroom. There will be sinks on this side and a little um, door to get to the toilet and bathtub area. And this is the door into the other room or the door from the other room into the bathroom. I did end up having some kind of weird issues with the um, windows on the front of the house. So if that bothers you a lot, you'll probably want to change that. Feel free to go ahead and do that. And then this is bedroom number two for our kid number two. Coming back out here, we have this small little hallway um, that leads to the guest room here and to our future childs, I suppose, if we accidentally have twins on our next one. And here we have a fourth bathroom for guests or for um, whoever is just over at the house, maybe hanging out upstairs. So maybe this would be a really good area for sleepovers. Um, yeah, lots and lots of options. Looks like we've got some fireworks going in the background here, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> some plum bobs. I don't know if you guys have watched those before. Pretty funny. Um, but yeah, that is the house tour of Upland Place, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.